Hey, 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 welcome to the Lavelle Show Women of Power podcast. I'm your host, Lavelle Vincenzi, and this is the show where women share their personal power tools, which I define as the tools, techniques, or strategies which have enabled their success in life and business. I ask all of my guests to be real, raw, honest, authentic, and vulnerable, dare I say. So this is a girl chat show like no other where we really do dive into what it is to be a powerful woman, the real tools behind a woman's success. Now, if you're on this channel, do hit that subscribe button right now and hit the bell to make sure that you're notified when new shows are added. You can also subscribe to find us on Instagram, which is at Lavelda Show. You'll find all links that have been shared in the show in the show notes. And right now we're gonna hop straight over whilst I do a audio introduction before we jump into the full show. So let's get started. Hey, 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 Chicas. Welcome to The Lavelda Show Women of Power podcast, the show where women share their personal power tools, the techniques, strategies, and ways of being which have enabled their success in life and business. I'm your host, Lavelda Vincenzi, an international MC and host and female speaking business coach on a mission to unleash authentic, powerful female voices onto the world. Now, this is a girl chat show like no other, as all of my guests get real, raw and authentic whilst sharing pure gold nuggets of wisdom. In today's episode, we'll be uncovering the power tools of Kubi Springer. Kubi is an award-winning international brand consultant and trainer with over 24 years of experience in branding and marketing. Starting her career in 1996, she has worked with some of the biggest brands in the world, including Nike, L'Oreal, Blackberry, MTV, Rio Ferdinand, Diddy, Just Justin Timberlake and Aston Martin. Since 2010, Kubi has used her branding expertise and lifelong passion for fashion, entertainment and beauty to spearhead projects that focus on global brand diversity. Her consultancy projects have enabled organizations to effectively connect with stakeholders from around the world, giving them the tools to adapt and sell to diverse audiences across cultural, gender and ethnic backgrounds. Her most recent consultancy project was with Aston Martin overseeing the London Fashion Week campaign. As part of the campaign, Kubi launched eight international female designers within the Mayfair car dealership. With designers from Dubai, Turkey, Nigeria and the UK, this campaign created synergy between fashion, female empowerment and luxury. Since 2021, Kubi has delivered personal brand and leadership training to enable executives to become better brand ambassadors for organisations that they serve. As a result, Kubi has taught branding in London, New York, Shanghai, Dubai, Kuala Lumpur, Istanbul, Ghana, Mauritius, and Spain, to name but a few. A dynamic and well-respected brand expert, her training clients include Facebook, Vogue, The Guardian, Stylist, and NatWest Bank, to name a few. In 2018, Kubi won BWB's Best Marketer of the Year Award and has become a regular contributor for BBC Radio 5's Business Hour. She has delivered brand commentary for Red Magazine, Harper's Bazaar, Forbes and recently Business Insider. In 2019, Kubi secured her book deal with Bloomsbury Publishing, the same publishers as J.K. Rowling of Harry Potter. Her I Am My Brand book was officially released on the 3rd of October 2019 in the UK and on the 28th of January 2020 in the US. I Am My Brand sold 4,200 copies in its first 12 weeks and in February 2020 she was shortlisted for the Business Book Awards Business Marketing Book category. Now in this episode we talk about what it means to build a brand and how to go about doing it, what brands really are and the fundamentals that make for a lasting brand. Now if you're listening to this show and you are really ready to stand out and be paid for your expertise, please use the link in the show notes to download your free copy of my speaker marketing blueprint, your guide to building the speaker marketing assets that match and reflect your expertise, increasing your speaker fee regardless of if you're brand new to speaking or if you're ready to level up your career. You will also find links to my latest special offers in the show notes. And at the time of recording this show, the doors are still open for the Nail Your Speaking Niche program and my signature Find Speaking Gigs Accelerator program. Finally, all of the links shared by my guests can be found in the show notes. And mm, P.S., 
please make sure that to get to your regular fix of this show, hit that subscribe button right now to make sure that you get updates as soon as a new show is added or just subscribe to get the notifications direct into your inbox. Now, I feel like that is more than enough from me for now and we just need to j jump in and get on with the show. Hey, 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 Chicas, welcome back to The Lavelda Show Women of Power podcast. Now, we are almost there with season two. I mean, we have literally got one, two, three more episodes ready to go. Um, so if you have not yet subscribed, like if you're new to the show, like you just stumbled across it like a little moment ago and you're kind of like, ooh, maybe you just listened to one episode, but you haven't yet subscribed. Girl, you better you better hit that subscribe button. I'm a, I'm a pause for a moment so you could do it. Did you hit it? All right, all right, good. Now, now that we're all present and correct, today's show, we're gonna be talking branding. And to be honest with you, mm, the chick I have brought today, you know when people say somebody has a list of like accomplishments, right? Just like a list of accomplishments. If you think of names in the music industry, in the car industry, in the fashion industry, I mean, the girl has just been going from industry to industry to industry and she's written her own book which has been out and it was hit if you want to know branding this is the chick you need to speak to she spoke at our very first female speakers conference back in 2018 and as i was composing who should be on the show this season i thought i can't do it without bringing her on board so please welcome to the show the incredible kobe springer mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. What a beautiful introduction. <laughs> Girl, you warrant it. I was here reading through your, um, your, so I know some of the stuff like the, the P Diddy stuff. I don't know whether to call him P Diddy or Puff Daddy or, you know, he, he doesn't change his name. <laughs> he doesn't change his name so many times, but I didn't realize I used to be a backing dancer for the Spice Girls. Yeah, so in my former life, before I got into branding, dance was my heartbeat. I was that, you know, that 80s baby that grew up on fame and Debbie Allen. And, um, you know, by the time I was four years old, I'd made my mind up, I'm gonna be Debbie Allen. And I went to the Royal Academy of Classical Ballet and I loved things all ballet. And, um, and then I diversified as I got a little bit older. So I did jazz and tap and street and African, but ballet was always my heartbeat. And so by the time I was in my teenage years and I had my first agent, you know, it was the eighties and they were looking for people who could do double pirouettes, a backflip and the running man. And I happened to be that chick. So um, <laughs> I ended up getting booked for stuff like CD UK and Top of the Pops, proper show my age, right? And Spice Girls was like my biggest claim to fame in the dance world, yeah. Damn girl, I yeah, used to do definitely. ballet, but I'm like clearly not anywhere near as good as you because. <laughs> well, in fairness, and people often ask, how did my branding career start? The truth is I got my internship at MTV because of the contacts I made doing the Spice Girls tour, right? Because most people don't kind of go, oh, I'm at uni and I'm at MTV. There has to be a bit of a backstory as to how you got at MTV. Um, and that's how my branding career started. When I injured my knee as a dancer, I already had contacts in the music industry. And one of them put me in touch with an amazing woman called Rachel B, uh, who was at the time one of the biggest PR gurus in the game. And I ended up being her assistant. So yeah, working Damn. on MTV at Trevor Nelson's Lick Party. Uh, I mean, you just collected up the celebrity names, but now I'm curious, like how, how were you so ballsy? Like, cause sometimes, I mean, there's two things that happens. It's either that you get lucky, but I kind of feel like even with luck, there'll be other people who danced with the Spice Girls and their careers never took off to the extent that you did. Like it might've just plateaued or that might've been the peak. And now, I don't know, they're delivering the post or something. Hiya. Um, but how, how were you that ballsy? Did you have it in your head at the time that that's where, that's the direction you wanted to be at? Like, no. How do these things line up? You know what? I wish I could sit here and be like, yes, I knew. That. <laughs> no, child, okay? I wanted to be a dancer. And so when my injury happened, I was devastated. I was mortified. I thought my world had ended. Um, and I hated the idea of being behind the camera. How dare you? I was like, I'm sorry. I've been training since I was four. What do you mean? Um, I hated it. And, um, but I, I felt like I didn't have a choice. It was like, if I'm not gonna dance, 
um, what do I do? And I loved the industry. I loved entertainment and I wanted to stay in the entertainment game. And, and I think what happened was um, hard work um, and, and relationships if I'm really honest, mm -hmm. the power of relationships. And it was the fact that I got on with the tour manager and he said to me, you can tour for England. Let me introduce you to Rachel B. And when I was doing um, that, I went and did a summer internship at Essence Music Festival. That happened through literally a relationship. I was like 18, met a boy in New York. He was cute. He was like, I'm going to Essence. I was like, I'm coming too. I got on the Greyhound from New York all the way to, to New Orleans, okay? Like literally slept with the crackheads and the drug addicts all the way to New Orleans because I had no money to fly, following this boy because I was fast. And um, and it was an essence that I met a young Diddy, a young Jay-Z, and a, another lady called Marsha Reed. And at the time, Marsha was Puff's PA. And so when I finished my degree and I wanted to come back to America, Marsha did the introduction to Puffy slash Diddy slash Sean Diddy Gomes. Um, so relationships. I think we can underestimate them because what's interesting is um, when you're in that space, it's like, how do you connect with these people in such a way? Because I'm sure, you know, People, when, you, when you're in meeting somebody in the know, those people get a sense, right? Like everybody wants to know them. Everybody wants to connect to them. How do you create a genuine connection without being like, oh my God, you know, can you do something for me? What, what was your tips in, because in that space, it's arguably quite challenging to get close enough to those sorts of individuals because so many people want a piece of them because of yeah. what that can do for them yeah. so what was your approach that meant you built such amazing relationships that have really been the bedrock of your career yeah people get it wrong they think the celebrities are the people they need to get to know no it's not the celebrity, it's the gatekeeper to the celebrity. That's who you need to get to know. So in my case, if we think about, uh, you know, Marsha, Marsha Reed was Puff's PA, right? She was the gatekeeper to him. And, and I was, you know, I was British, she's British, and both of us were in America at the time. So we kind of naturally drew to each other. She's a, a few years older than me, but we naturally drew to each other. Then we found out that actually she knows my older brother from like back in London, and we were all the way in New, Le New Orleans, which was mad. Um, but I think the relationships are about recognizing that you need relationships with people who are at your level, because in five, 10 years, 20 years time, they're gonna people be the people who are the CEOs. You need relationships with people who are below you because they're the next young guns coming up. And you need relationships with people who are above you because they can open doors and they can mentor you. So don't get fixated on the celebrity. I've never been fixated on celebrity. I've been fixated on how do I make an impact in this industry? How do I deliver? How do I be the best? Um, and if I happen to be working with a celebrity cool but it's not about the celebrity per se so you never what's in I find that fascinating because like branding and PR are so close to each other it's like sales branding and PR are like all mm. kind of very they're like they're like close cousins like best yeah. best friends right yeah. mm -hmm. and so for somebody who's been so successful in branding to go oh don't like I didn't worry about the celebrity status really like whether they're a celebrity or not I'm just here to do a, do a great job and mm -hmm. it wasn't about chasing the celebrity I was fortunate I met a lot of them and I I managed to I, I did great work for them and that one thing led to another so how do you find that balance between when you should be actively going out to um, create those joint ventures say or find those PR opportunities that are going to catapult your business and when you just get your head down and just do the job and just build the connections because it's almost like there's, there's these two sides to it right one is quite active let me go out and find the right people and get in the right magazines and all of that sort of stuff um, but the other the other side is almost let me just do a great job and then we'll see what happens what is the balance there so that mm -hmm. you're not in that kind of plateau yeah, that's such a good question. So I think you've got to, I think you've got to check motive. So in the first 10 years of my career, remember I come from a dancer's background. So when you train as a dancer, it's about mastering your craft. Like you can't wake up and do a double pirouette child. You can't wake up and fall into the box splits. Like none of that's happening for you. You can't wake up and be on point A and be good. Like you literally have to practice every day and you have to master your craft. So I took that approach to 
branding. I was like, I just want to be the best in branding. And so the first 10 years of my career was about mastering my craft and working underneath the best people in the industry so that I could be the best version of me. And I think we're in an age now, particularly with social media, where everybody wants to be the best before they've done the grind. Ooh, and it's like, girl, you, you just done said it. You just done said it. <laughs> I see people out there and they're just like launch number one. I want 500 people. And I'm like, listen, if you get 10, boo, you did good. <laughs> you did. And, and this is the pressure that, that one must take off themselves, right? No matter what age you might be starting, focus on being the best. And I, and I always say this, the best get paid every time. Okay, mm -hmm. the best get paid. You think about this, Usain Bolt, the best chick, right? He got paid. Beyonce, the best chick, she got paid, right? Verena, um, Serena Williams, chick, the best, they get paid. The best get paid. Don't chase the money. Don't chase the status. Chase being the best at what you do. And you will always get paid, always. And that for me was the first 10 years. I mean, people often say to me, they're like, do you have a picture with Diddy? Do you have a picture with Justin? Do you have a picture with Mariah? And I was like, no, I was busy working. Like, <laughs> who had time to be like, eh, pause? Like, and this is, you remember, this is before Google, before, before Snapchat, social media and that, before, before people. <laughs> right? So the focus back then wasn't how do I capture the moment to spread on the gram? The focus right then was how do I be amazing so that Puff actually wants me to work with him next week? Do you know what I mean? Or how do I do such an amazing job for Justin Timberlake that he introduces me to one of his friends who might happen to be Eminem or might happen to be Mariah Carey? That was the focus on the first mm -hmm. 10 years of my career. And I like that you, the time frame, I, I say I like the time frame. May nobody want to hear it's going to take 10 years, especially if you, <laughs> especially if you, but you know, a bit more mature in, in, in this, in this world, you know, you got, you got a few miles on the tank. You don't want to hear it's going to take 10 years, but I also like the realness of that because um, especially I've seen this hype in, in terms of, you know, it's going to happen. It's going to happen tomorrow. We're like a really fast paced society at the moment. And that's not to say that you don't have those outliers where it's like, Oh, they, you know, created this incredible business and boom, they were off in like six months. or they were off in three months. I mean, those things happen, but I think we miss that most of the time that's not actually the reality. No, I mean, even those so-called boom moments, when you actually look at their careers, there's a foundation before the boom, right? So like my new TV show hits America on Monday. Now, those people in America who've never heard of me, they're going to be like, whoa, where did this chick come from? Boom, moment. And then they're going to Google me and be like, oh, okay, there was 24 <laughs> years before the boom. Like, do you know what I mean? So I think that even those who appear to have those wild moments, it's only because you haven't, un to use your term, you haven't pulled back the curtain and seen 10 years of grind or 17 years of grind or the foundation or the 10 million failures before they got that one right. There was never anybody in my entire career who I've ever met who's had a boom without a foundation, ever. Yeah. Not one that's sustainable. Right. Um, and I want to overstress this because you can have a one hit wonder. Everybody remember Eminem? Okay. You can have a one hit wonder, but whether or not you can sustain success requires a foundation. It just requires solid roots for the tree to be able to stand. And I like that idea of solid because sometimes when you're going so fast, it's actually very difficult because just before we got on to record, we were talking about team and like how I was like, girl, I don't know how people try and do this without building a team. Like it's, you know, because I watch people like I'm doing this by myself. I'm like, you gonna burn out. Like, I don't know how big <laughs> you're going to make this by yourself. Like is work your ambition. Is that it? Is that all you want to do with your life? Um, but I, I think the faster you go, the harder it is to get those solid team members. And to me, at least, I feel like there's a handful of team members where you're like, if you wasn't here, boo. <laughs> if, if you wasn't here, I don't know that I could do this. And, you know, we need those people. And, and they, but they take a little bit of time to find, especially when we're not used to like knowing what we want and we're growing at the same time. Whereas mm -hmm. I found anytime I've gone too fast, I've hired the wrong people or I've hired too fast or it, something's not quite been right. I've just not had the space to grow into it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I also feel like, especially now, one of the things we have to remember is when you boom quickly, the amount of attention you can get. Mm -hmm. We well, mm -hmm. ain't ready. 
<laughs> we ain't built for this. Absolutely. I think there's three things. One is people, processes, and technology. That needs to make up part of the foundation of the roots to your tree. And each one of those are going to require you kissing some frogs before you get the right one, right? But from the outset of building whatever you're trying to build, you should have the mindset of people, processes, technology. How do I build this so that it can sustain beyond me? And don't buy into this idea of being self-made. Ain't nobody self-made. There are no self-made people out here, right? We all require a community, a tribe to be able to build this. And I think for me, when I, um, you know, when I launched out and again with my career, I didn't set out to be an entrepreneur. Most people don't realize this, right? I didn't set out to run an agency. I set out to be the best branding person I could be. I found myself having too many clients after Mobo that I naturally had to you had to find you had to find a team otherwise it <laughs> exactly. was either you're going to turn them down or you had to find another way to deliver and they it turning our clients to be like fine <laughs> okay so that's not happening so i naturally after being head of marketing for mobos was you know just had to pull together this team that eventually evolved into the business right and so i think it's so important that from the beginning have the mindset that even if it's your mother, your uncle, your cousin, your best friend, your boo, right? Have people who are building with you, interns that are building with you, young people that are doing placements with you. You cannot do it on your own. You just cannot. I'm curious because, I mean, we know a lot about all the things that went really well. Will you share with us like one moment or one one mistake or moment, something that happened where you kind of went that, that was transformative and, and not transformative. Cause it was like, Oh my God, this is amazing. It was transformative. Cause I had to check myself for a moment. <laughs> like I really had to step back and go, Whoo! but it's the thing that made me, do you have one of those? Do I have one? Oh. <laughs> okay. Hold on. Hold on. Girls like, mm, you want me to open this can? It's yeah. full of worms. Which one do you want? Listen, so, so one of the ones that is very public and, and probably most recent is when I was writing my book, I Am My Brand, um, I was signed by Bloomsbury Publishing. So I want to create the picture so people can understand the depth of the pain, right? I was signed by Bloomsbury Publishing. Bloomsbury Publishing are the same publishing house for Harry Potter, J.K. Rowling. So it's a big deal when you mm -hmm. get signed by Bloomsbury. I had three months of which to write my book, I Am My Brand, and I was contracted with an advance that I had banked, <laughs> okay? So this is the picture that I'm painting you. And um, 30 days before I was due to hand in my book, my husband asked for a divorce. Right, I knew you weren't ready for that. That's why I had to paint the picture, okay? My husband asked for a divorce. And I was devastated. I was shocked. Uh, bear in mind, we'd only got married two years prior, mm -hmm. so we were newlyweds. And, it's uh, fresh, isn't it? You're just kind of like, whoa, whoa, listen, whoa. Wait, I'm, I'm at the peak of my moment. I'm having a moment here. A moment, right? I'm having a moment. And we just got married. And, you know, for anybody who's ever been married, you know, like you think you're the ish. Do you know what I mean? Like you just got married to your boo. We had this amazing wedding in Barbados on the beach. It was picture fairy tale. You know, we were living the Cosby life. He drives a Porsche. Uh, you know, I drive a Porsche. He drives a Bentley. We live in a seven bedroom. Look at us, the power couple, you know doing the black icon thing and then he asked for a divorce and in that moment I had to decide do I do what my heart wanted to do which was pull the covers over my face and cry for 10 years mm -hmm. or do I continue to wipe the book and the strength that it had to take and the discovery of my true I am was in that moment and that's really changed the game for me moving forward. And that, that, that was just the, the audience say that was just under two years ago when all this kicked off. And I've got to be honest, before I thought I was secure as a woman, but when you go through that and you still need to write a book crying and you still need to market the book and you still need to tour Asia and you're going back into the hotel room crying and then coming back out and getting back on stage and you're questioning, was it me? Am I fat? Am I ugly? Am I old? Will anybody love me again? I mean, all of that was going mm -hmm. on and I still had to do this book. And through it all, we sold 10,000 copies. That, that for me has been the biggest game changer. 
Girl, I got chills all up and down the spine. <laughs> Lord, mm. it happens. Like my guest share, and I'm like, oh my gosh. Oh, I mean, it's interesting because I'm like listening to you going, we can look so much at a, let's call it the shiny picture of somebody's life and what's going on and have no idea of the real human pain that other people are feeling in the same moment. Yeah. And um and it's, I'm like tearing up here. Like it's part of the reason I do this show, not to have everybody come like air their dirty laundry, but just to show like the humanity of us as women, like, you know, to be in the moment where you've got your biggest success and arguably at the same time, what feels like your biggest failure happening Absolutely. simultaneously. Absolutely. I mean, and it, heartbreak ain't no joke. It don't matter how, how old you are. That is no joke. It's no joke. And, and you said it so eloquently. It was this jocular position of my biggest moment to date and my biggest failure or what I thought was a failure. Um, and, you know, in the end, I write about it in my book, I, you know, my final chapter, I ended up just telling my truth because my book is called I Am My Brand. And the reality is, is as you're building brands, you're going to get knocked. And so I ended up writing about how I was writing, having just been asked for a divorce. Literally, that's how I closed the book out. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's it's those moments, those crises that actually end up making you, right? Those, those things that we think are the most devastating, the most horrible, actually show you, you got this for real, for real. Like, forget your CV. You got this at a heart space, at a character space, at a gut space. You got this cube. No matter what your CV looks like, you the human being, you got this. Yeah, so beautiful. And I love that you... It wasn't like, let me pull myself together and pretend like everything's okay. Um, I kind of, because I feel like sometimes the strong woman, that's what we do, right? Let's bottle it all up. Let's take all of that ish. I don't even need to say, let's take the shit and put it under the carpet. Like, let's pack it up and send it somewhere to Antarctica or somewhere where it could just freeze, you know? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I love that you kind of went, I went on the stage, I did my job, and then I just came back and cried in a pool of tears. Because, because to me, there's a huge strength in, you know what, I can show up and I can just own that right now. It's a bit crap. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like it. It hurts. It's... I and it's so important. I mean, my, my most recent vlogs are all about the truth, right? So even as we were recording the TV show, 24 hours before the first record date, our major sponsor pulls out. And I had to find 15,000 pounds out of my backside, right? And I was like, I'm gonna vlog this because this is real. Like I, I was literally like moving boxes and then having to go and get my makeup done. The makeup artist had to put on extra concealer because I was so tired. Like, listen, now I just don't care. I'm 42, I'm gonna tell you the truth. <laughs> this issue is hard. <laughs> and I'm gonna vlog about it and show you. <laughs> You know what? I think um, I wrote something about this the other day and I said, the, the irony is the more we can show up just as ourselves, because I, I was kind of, I actually wrote a LinkedIn pod uh, post saying, you know, my, I didn't realize the depth of my mission until recently, like it's just been dropping. So I was like, I'm a, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna leash a powerful, authentic female voices onto the world, right? And that yeah. felt like, it felt really good, right? Yeah. And then as I sat with it more, I was like, hold on a minute. Powerful, authentic voices, holy crap. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> right? Because each one of those words I now need to live more Absolutely. into, right? I don't get to show up and say I'm feeling okay when I'm not feeling okay. Absolutely. I don't get to do that anymore. I don't get to um, not deal with my internal and my external voice. I don't get to play that game anymore. Absolutely. But I think the, the irony is that often what we, what we wanna do is show up and put on a show, especially if you're like us and you come from like a performance background, right? Absolutely. Let's put on a show. <laughs> so much go on my darling. It nice must cameras, be. action, you know? Yeah. Or the other alternative that I'm now seeing is the complete opposite where people are just, you know, emotionally vomiting all over social media. Oh, God. And I'm like, whoa, pause, time out. <laughs> Like, you know, if you're trying to build a brand, um, and I say this all the time, I didn't talk about what happened when my husband asked for divorce until I've gone to counseling, yeah. right? 
I couldn't actually get on stage and talk about it. I couldn't come on a podcast like this and talk about it until I had done the work of dealing with it. Mm -hmm. Because there's a difference between being authentic and emotionally vomiting on your tribe. And I don't think it's fair to emotionally vomit on your tribe. On your tribe. In fact, it's irresponsible. So Agreed. You know, right? You have to deal with your ish. You have to deal with your stuff. And once you've dealt with your stuff to some degree where you can be responsible with your stuff, then you start talking about it publicly. That's what I think personally. I, I couldn't agree more. I think um, some people just use it as a space to like emotionally vomit. But what you're, what you're then doing is expecting other people to deal with your stuff. And there isn't a lesson um, what exactly. you need is, you know, un unless it's a group of counselors that you're emotionally vomiting into, stop that now. Agreed. Go find Agreed. the help you need, Absolutely. you know, do it behind. And I'm not saying not to talk about it or not to express that you're going through some challenges, but you don't go and talk about the details of it. Just hush it down. Take a couple of moments out, deal with what you have to deal with, and then come back more strong and deliver the message powerfully so that other Absolutely. people can learn and grow from it. Absolutely. There's two things I love about what you said that for me, it just resonates at my core in everything I do, which is where's the teaching moment, mm -hmm. right? Where's the teaching moment and whatever it is that you're putting out into the world. And um, if you haven't worked out the teaching moment, the chances are you're not ready to include it into your brand story. Right. And brand stories are powerful. And I, I show people how to do them. And as an agency, we prepare them for people. But brand stories are the most powerful when the individual behind the brand has healed from the pain in the story. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's emotionally vomiting. Well, it, it's not powerful. It just it's weak. It's not it's not grounded. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like you need to have landed that so solid because that story is going to attract other people in that pain. And if you ain't through it, how are you going to help them get through it? How are you going to be leading? You're like, oh, I'm limping along here. My leg don't work. My arm don't work. <laughs> it's just not gonna work I have a moment of limping just just get the support you know yeah. what I mean just, just get the support for sure Kubi this is like girl I didn't even expect I was I was I didn't know what to expect I didn't know what to expect but I'm loving I'm loving this conversation and I'm loving the the rawness that you're bringing to it so thank you so much for like sharing so openly and so authentically. It's a word I think people bound around a lot, but I think it's a very important one, especially in this digital era yeah. to really be able to see people. And often, often we don't get that. And I'm yeah. like, I'm missing. That's where the connection is really at. Absolutely. So, you know, when I was younger, I wasn't authentic at all. Right. <laughs> if authenticity takes time. Let's be honest. Like when I was in my twenties, I was still like camera action child. Like I watched some of the TV show stuff I did in my twenties. And I'm like, what is this child doing? Like, honestly, what is she? Somebody take her off the telly. I thought I was all that and a bag of chips, but I was living from a place and showing up from a place of in from insecurity. Yeah. Right. So even the journey of being authentic is a journey. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Even that in and of itself, like I'm going to be authentic. Okay, boo, that's a journey. <laughs> okay. That's a journey. Even that. <laughs> Get on the line. <laughs> Girl, I hear you. Cause it's a little bit at a time you take it off. You're like, are they going to like it? It's like a strip tease. That's the only way I could put it. It's like, it's like a strip tease of life where you're like, Ooh, are they going to like it? Yeah. Oh, I don't care. I don't care. Some liked it and some didn't, but they liked it. Some liked it when it was on and some didn't eat then either. But Absolutely. that was harder to maintain than just kind of being like, here I am. Take yeah. it or leave it. Absolutely. And not only are they going to like it, but can I handle it? Mm -hmm. Am I ready to step into the spotlight this naked, this bare? You know, so F, can they handle it? Can you handle it? Do you know what I mean? That's why it's also a journey. That's why it's also a process as well. Because even within that authenticity, there's going to be some things well, authentic within the boundaries of my business. Yeah. Not just authentic, okay? <laughs> like I'll give you a story. I was doing a speaking gig at a um, one of the largest accountancy firms in the world, no names mentioned. And I got on and I spoke about the power of personal branding and leadership. And I talked about authenticity. And then I got off and there's probably a room of about maybe 500 people, mid management to senior management. I got off and this, this uh, woman came up to me. I placed at her late twenties, early thirties. And she was quite frustrated. And she said, Cooper, you know what? I've tried this authentic thing, but this company, they don't like it when I show up with my tattoo showing. 
authentic within the boundaries of your industry. Do you know what I mean? Like there are industry boundaries. There are business boundaries, just not authentic. She works for one of the biggest consultants, um, uh, you know, accountancy firms. That's a corporate multinational. No child, they don't want to see your tattoos. No, it's not going to happen. Don't work for Google if that's what you want to do. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's, like, just, it's not going to happen for that brand. You know, it's no. just, that's, that's not the nature of the brand. There are just certain brand images. And if you don't like it, then start your own similar brand in which that is okay and you'll find that there are certain clients that will resonate with it and certain that won't it doesn't make it right or wrong it just means look if that's who you want to authentically be able to express yourself as at work you need to find another job <laughs> it's just it's not going to happen here it's not going to happen here. it's a mismatch of cultural fit mm. Mm. what <laughs> you said mismatch a cultural fit mm. I feel like, I, I, I don't know, next season, I think I'm going to get a mic so I could drop it. But my, my, my because people say such cool stuff, right? But my concern is that it's just going to mess up the audio. Like I'm going to be here dropping mics. I, I'm going to need more than one because it'll probably fall on the floor and then I'm not going to be, you know, and it, it's been, we've been in like quarantine in and out stuff. So I got better at waist up dressing. So if it drops on the floor, you get what I, you get where I'm going, you know, it could be a disaster. Maybe I'm going to have, I'll, I'll just take that back and, and rethink that plan. Kubi, with everything that you've done to date, um, I always think that people's perspective of power is very much driven by their their cultural background as well as their their life experience like where you were and what you've done um drive how you and who you were around kind of drives how how you see um power so here's a question i ask every single guest and i'm curious what your answer to this would be what would you define as the essence of a woman's power mm. I think the essence of a woman's power starts with self-belief. And for me, self-belief is about what you're anchored in. So for the listeners, I'm a Christian, very much unapologetic. And so I'm anchored in Christ. I know whose I am and I know where I come from. And I stand from the voices and the shoulders of powerful black women ancestrally. And I stand from the spiritual guidance of Jesus Christ. And so my belief is anchored in those two things. Mm -hmm. My belief is anchored in, I've got the tenacity and the entrepreneurial spirit of Madam C.K. Walker. Right? My belief is I have got the bravery of Harriet Tubman running through my veins. My belief is I've got the gumption of the Windrush generation who made it here in the UK. So I think it starts and stops with knowing who you are and truly believing in who you are at a heart space, not a head space. Because the gremlins are always going to talk to your head. You're not good. You're too fat. Like the gremlins are always going to talk to your head, right? Always. They're not going to go anywhere, child. Get used to them. You know, build a relationship with them. Like, oh, you're <laughs> wonderful. Okay. Just get used to them. They don't go. But you know, I think it's funny you say that because I, I honestly, honestly believe and I was probably one of these people that thought once you get more successful they kind of shut up they no. don't they just have more to say about <laughs> bigger problems absolutely and they've got a whole history of when you're messed up too right so the more successful you become I think the bigger their voices because now they're like well remember when you were 29 remember when you were 18 right so no they don't go anywhere so get familiar and friendly with your grandmothers have a good old relationship with them but that's all headspace but at our heart space you need to believe who you are and I think it starts there I think secondly it's about really valuing relationships my career has been based on relationships you know I've got a, a column in Harper's Bazaar because I have a relationship with Lydia Slater who's the editor of Harper's Bazaar yes I'm great at what I do but how many people do you know who are great and broke right so Ooh, being girl. <laughs> right? Being great isn't enough. Being good at what you do isn't enough. Even being the best at what you do isn't enough if you haven't cultivated real strong relationships that can help you navigate. And then I think the final thing is staying focused. And I think particularly during choppy times like where we are now, stop jumping from one thing to another. The thing that has kept me going for 24 years is that branding is what I do. And 
I do it and I do it and I do it well. And I think people need to just sit in their power, sit in their strength and stay focused on the calling on their life. Stay focused on the mission that's been placed in their heart because we all know the mission and the assignment that's been placed in our heart. All of us, right? Mm -hmm. You can run away from it for 20 years doing a nine to five. It is still there. It doesn't go because it's your mission on this lifetime. And, And we all have missions. So just stay focused on that mission and the money will come. Okay, I'm gonna have to. Well, firstly, you don't jump forward and give giving us your power tools, but I'm 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 here for it. I am here for it, girl. But I'm gonna have to ask you. I'm gonna play devil's advocate for a moment mm-hmm. when it comes to staying focused, because you know what the word of the the year's been? It's been a pivot. To pivot, everybody's been pivoting. They all want to be ballerinas this year. Pivot, 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 <laughs> pivot, 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 pivot. We're pivoting mm-hmm. all over the place. So now I'm curious, like. How do we stay focused Mm -hmm. when things are moving so much and we need some cash money and Mm -hmm. somebody offered us something, which isn't quite us, but we could do it. Um, Mm -hmm. Where do we, how do we find that balance to kind of keep focused on the thing that we know is our heart's calling Mm -hmm. in times in which maybe our heart's calling doesn't really have as much of a space to exist because the economic climate has changed. That's a beautiful question. So you always need to have investors in your assignment, okay? And if you have to get a nine to five job, see that nine to five job as the investor in your assignment, but you stay focused on the assignment. If you have to get a freelance contract just to pay the bills or go and work in Sainsbury's just so the mortgage can get paid, there is no shame in any of that, Mm -hmm. but call it what it is. It is an investment into your assignment. You don't leave the assignment just because you've now got a new investor stream. And I think what happens is people go, oh, I'm going to go and pivot over here and do this job. Or this is now what I do. No, that's not what you do. That's just investing in your assignment. That's all it is, right? So let me put that in practical terms. Let's say, for example, you have to do a nine to five. And it's, it's, it's taken up a lot of time and energy and you're exhausted at the end of the day. Even if you just say half an hour every day, either before work or after work, I'm going to stay focused on my assignment. I'm going to stay focused on what I've been called here to do. That keeps you baby steps, baby steps, baby steps, baby steps, staying on the lane of going to where you need to go. It's okay to have a job. It's not okay to have a job and leave the assignment. Mm, girl, it is not okay to leave the assignment. What? I love the way that you put it. Just see it as an investment strategy. Because exactly. I, I watch people do it very often, like take a job and then that's it. And I know for a while, like I when before I left my full-time job, because I grew my speaking business on the side. Mm-hmm. And there was a point in which I was like, this is just to pay the bills, boo-boo. You know, my this is what I'm doing, but this I have to continue to show up to I have to continue to deliver my um my commitment to I mean it wasn't it it, it, you know sometimes the work had to come home with me you know there was stuff that needed to be done but at the same time I knew I wasn't going to be there I was not building a career like that was not what I was about to do I was not building a career I was in there to do a job so I could get the get money so that I can invest in my business and I was and I was doing some crazy old projects I mean I was working some long ass hours doing some ridiculous projects Mm -hmm. that now come together and I can see how they kind of fit nicely together and not all of them were paid I mean at one point I used to drive an hour and a half after work to go and uh do a radio show right. at a community radio station and I didn't know why I was doing it but it was speaking <laughs> you were speaking you were building the tools you were building the experience and also when I say an investment it's not only just the paycheck that you get at the end of the day it might be that you're meeting certain people in that job who will be able to feed into your dream maybe they'll be able to support you in terms of motivating you it might be that that job can put you on a course so you can mm-hmm. level up your technological skills that will help your business later down the line like don't just look at it as a paycheck but say actually if this was an investor right literally I went to you know uh, Donald Trump's you're fired right if this was an investor what is all the things that this job could give my dream so that it could level up what skills do I need what people do I need what resources maybe they've got a printer but you can't afford a printer at home so child that printer's investing in your dream right I used to do that girl Mm. (laughs) <laughs> saying like how 
you utilize this to be able to stay focused on the assignment? Number one. And number two, recognize that you can pivot. Um, let's say, for example, I take me as a branding person. You can pivot, but still do branding. Yeah. Because there's a difference between pivot and turn. Okay. When we think about ballet, a pivot is a pivot. The head still stays focused. Right? If we really think about ballet, when a ballerina is pivoting, she's pivoting, but her head is still looking at the camera. Mm. A turn means your head has turned with you. You're gone somewhere else. <laughs> so Bye. we're not asking you to turn, we're asking you to pivot. So you still stay in branding. So for example, me again, I'm practical, right? The beginning of the year, most of my speaking gigs were on a plane, international, large corporates, whether that be Facebook or Google, like big corporates, okay? All right, COVID happens, we need to pivot. I still do branding, but we launch an online brand academy. That's a pivot. A, a turn is, oh, I no longer do branding, now I'm going to go and be a yoga instructor. No, just because I like yoga doesn't mean I now become a yoga instructor, okay? Just like keep the hobby for the hobby. And so I think what some people are doing, not everybody, but what some people are doing is they are turning, they're not pivoting. Mm -hmm. And those are two different things. Yeah. It, it, it's the creativity in the thing that you're doing right now. It's to say, okay, the delivery mechanism doesn't work. It's like the, you know, if we take the hospitality industry, for example, it's like the restaurants who got really early on. If I just get on every delivery app known to mankind, I might just get through this. Um, we're well, still we, making food, but we just gonna close food. the doors and Absolutely. you don't have to come pick it up. <laughs> it's like the beautician that says, actually, you know, I can't open my salon, so let me do beauty in a box, right? And let me do, let me launch a subscription service for my lipsticks and eyelashes, right? Mm -hmm. You're still doing what you're called to do, but a pivot, as you rightly said, so eloquently said, is a change of distribution of the talent, but the talent is still being distributed. Mm -hmm. you, you don't need moment. I need to, I need to write that down for myself. <laughs> That, that, that's a tweetable right there. You don't want to change the talent. It's a dis change of distribution of the talent. <laughs> Girl, you took us to church right I'm then. <laughs> See, I knew there was something more I needed to get from you. I just, I just knew it. I was like, mm, come on, come on, come to mama. <laughs> Kobe, you've been awesome. Not that I like, not that I expect anything different from you. Like your energy is always on point. Your, um, the way that you deliver the nuggets, you always just have a really interesting, unique perspective on something. And it's, and it's not, you know, sometimes people come as a bit dry, you know, it's a bit too heady. My girl comes real. <laughs> She's just like, listen now, <laughs> let's just call a spade a spade. This is not what I mean. It was this, right? Um, so there'll be people who've listened this far in the show and some of whom have not yet bought your book, which mm, shame on you. They will do by the end of this. But um, how can people stay in touch with you? Like what are the best connection points for you? And they will all be in the show notes. Yes, I think the best way to connect with me is to go to my website, all the W's, She Builds Brands. And everything that you need can be got from there. You know, the book, I Am My Brand is literally in 25 different countries around the world, which is amazing. We are just about to sign a, a language deal for it to be translated into Spanish, which is phenomenal. So it's on Amazon and Barnes and Nobles and Waterstones and, and all the other good places you find books. Kindle as well, people always say, is it on Audible? Yes, it's on Audible. Um, so yeah, you can you can buy it, you can listen to it, you can write notes in it. Um, but I think the main thing is go to shebuildsbrands.com and, and you can get everything there. And, and Kubi brought gifts. What have you got for us? What I've got today. It's just before Christmas too. It's like the best. <laughs> yeah. I actually am offering you guys a free uh, complimentary 15 minute one-to-one. -one. And in that time, what we can do is we can do a little bit of an audit on where your brand is, whether it's your personal brand and you're trying to level up your career or your business brand, and you're trying to level up your business. Um, so yeah, a free 15 minute one-to-one -one consultancy session. Boom, in the notes. And if you haven't clicked that already, you need to get moving because mm, gonna go fast. In the show notes. Kubi, thank you, 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 thank you. How many more thank yous can I say? It was phenomenal. Um, but but I'm gonna be I'm gonna be greedy. I'm not done yet. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be that much more greedy. You see, peeps, I work for you. I'm working hard for you. You see how much I'm pulling from the guests just for you. I'm gonna be super greedy. And if there was just like one like juicy nugget, cause 2021 is around the corner. And if there was just one thing that we could take 
into 2021 from a branding perspective that really like help us and our businesses going forward? One thing or one way of being, just something, like what bit of wisdom can you just leave us with Mm. for 2021 branding? Okay. So I think when it comes to personal branding, uh, you need to be unapologetic. You need to be unapologetic about your talents. You need to be unapologetic about your gifts. You need to be unapologetic about your desire to level up. You need to be unapologetic about being a light in the darkness because the world right now is very dark. Be unapologetic about what you're doing. Do not be ashamed of the fact that God has given you a unique, beautiful, amazing gift. Package it up, brand it up, step into your spotlight without apology. (laughs) <laughs> more chills <laughs> oh, the chills don't apologize people you don't heard it here first do not apologize so in 2021 anything you were saying sorry for you better leave it in 2020 because 2021 you're gonna show up without apology kubi springer ladies and gentlemen has been here gr- granting us with her presence thank you so much for joining us today um <laughs> That has brought us to the end of the show. You have got a little bit more time if you'd like to join the holiday draw. All that means is that you've got to follow us on Instagram at Lavelda Show and send us a little note. Leave us a little love message. Share something, but you've got to tag us in it because otherwise we don't know what was you. And you can win a free profile audit, speaker profile audit with moi if you do so. So if you haven't done so already, please do that. And if you're not yet subscribed to the show, hit that subscribe button. Until next time, Cheekers, no apologies, show up unapologetically as you. You've been listening to The Lavelda Show Women of Power podcast. Ciao. Bye.